Hey everyone, Sharon Hong Gelfand here. I decided to do this video. It's a little different than my tip of the week uh, because I've been having a lot of conversations lately with friends and especially my clients where there's a common thread that seems to be going through it of this idea of us needing to be somebody whom we're not needing to feel that we have to be perfect in some way, needing to think that we've got to fulfill somebody else's expectations of who we're supposed to be. And it's really given me a lot to reflect on in my own life because it dawned on me that, oh my God, I was like that. I had these perceptions and these belief systems that I was supposed to be a certain way and behave a certain way and if something was bothering me, fix it. You know, if there was a problem with something, you know, don't ask for help, do it yourself. Don't air your dirty laundry, just, you know, keep the blinders on, do what you gotta do, get where you're supposed to go. Don't deviate from point A to point B. Yet, life is about all those deviations. Life isn't a straight road, right? You know, it's it's gotta, it's gonna have detours and, and all these you know, ways that you're going to travel down your path that are not direct. And I have so many clients who get so frustrated with the idea that if they're not dieting perfectly, then they're failing. And that really resonated with me because so many times and moments in my life, I felt that because I hadn't done something perfectly, I had failed and a couple of big areas in my life that I felt that way about was my divorce, my marriage, and my son's diagnosis. When he was diagnosed with Crohn's, as a mother, I really took it to heart. I felt terrible. I, I cried. I thought that I had done something wrong. I thought that if I had just fed him differently, if I had just paid attention, uh, all these things that I really didn't have a lot of control over, but thought that I did, that maybe there would have been a different outcome. And being getting divorced was a whole other, um, you know, ball game because I failed. I failed in marriage, so what did they say about me? What did that say about my ability to, uh, to be a parent? Could I still be a good parent to my kids? And I think that we all face this in different areas of our lives that really are a common thread of our own belief system of us feeling that we're good enough and that things that we go through are just all part of the journey. And I wanted to share that with you. And it's a little uncomfortable for me because it's, you know, it, uh, being a little vulnerable. And for those of you who know me, I like to kind of be in control of things, you know, maybe just a little bit of a control freak, just a little. But at the end of the day, we can have all these great plans and we should, we should have goals, we should have ideas of what we want to do, but we need to learn to not be so rigid in getting there because life does throw you a lot of lemons and it's really how you, what you do with those lemons, how you decide to make a good lemonade that's going to taste sweet, not sour. And for me, this journey that I took allowed me to reflect on who I wanted to be and what kind of a parent I wanted to be for my kids. And I don't think if we hadn't gone through all of this as a family, that I would be able to have the space to then allow my kids to grow into these beautiful young adults that they're growing into, for them to then have the space to do what their passion is, their purpose, you know, to, to follow what feels good for them because they want to, not because someone told them they have to. And it's just so interesting because, again, when I speak with my clients and we're so bombarded with all these messages and all they hear is, you know, you have to diet a certain way and you have to do certain things a certain way and then we get so confused with all this information, we feel that if we're not being perfect in the way that we're handling things, then there's something wrong with us. And there's nothing wrong with us at all. But we've somehow gotten it into our heads, into these stories that... There, that, that there is something wrong. 
and I want you to think about all the good stuff that has happened because of adverse experiences that you may have had. And I truly believe that adversity is great. Adversity is actually wonderful because it's forcing you and it's pushing you to grow as a person. Because truly at the end of the day, we're all here to grow. We're all here to learn. We're all here to expand everything about ourselves individually so that we can then expand collectively uh, to a higher vibration, to a greater experience that is so much more satisfying. And if you feel sometimes that things are being thrown at you again and again and again and you keep wondering like, God, why does this keep happening to me? It's the universe's way of shaking you and saying, wake up. There's a reason that this is happening to you. You know, for me, everything that was falling apart in my body you know, my pituitary adenoma, my migraine headaches, my sore throats, my eczema, my aches and pains, my hypoglycemia. I mean, my body was sending me signals and I wasn't paying attention. And it wasn't until I ended up in the hospital one day because thankfully it was just a pinched nerve, but because I couldn't move that I actually had to stop and think about what I was avoiding. And when you keep avoiding things, it's going to keep hitting you again and again and again until you're ready to face it. And it may seem scary because you don't know what the outcome is going to be. And if you're like me, who likes to control things and you wanna see that outcome, it's, it's tough to let go of all of that. But the letting go part is actually the best part because it's so freeing because it allows you to jump and know that there's going to be a safety net, to know that you're not going to fall on your face, to know that from every experience that you go through, something greater, something good comes out of it. Sometimes we can't explain why things happen and why we go through things, but at the end of the day, being able to experience this adversity, to being able to let go and realize, I don't have to control everything. It's not about being perfect. It's not about fulfilling somebody else's expectations, but fulfilling my own of me, as long as it's coming from a place of love in your heart, you'll never go wrong because it'll feel right. You'll feel connected. And that's what we need at the end of the day is for our souls and our bodies, physically, emotionally, spiritually, to be connected, to reconnect, because then it feels euphoric, it's happy. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that happiness and it's only gonna come from within. So I hope that this um, little story has um, inspired you to think about maybe something that you're going through that um, you've been struggling with and just knowing that you're not alone. You know, we all go through something. Um, some of us are just better at sharing than others and I'm going to try to share a little more about that. <laughs> so uh, I hope that you found this um, helpful. And you know, if so, and you think somebody else can benefit from it, you know, feel free to share. If you have any comments or want to, um, you know, ask me anything, do that also. Thanks.